Now this is an absolutely brilliant question and it is only based on simple GCSE physics, but yet from a class of A-level students about 70% cannot answer it. This question was originally a British Physics Olympiad question and that was aimed at students in year 12. I actually liked it so much I even included it in one of my daily workout books. So on the 13th of November, book two, you can find the same question with work solutions. And, and I just thought it was such a nice, simple thing, but was actually quite tricky to get your head around. So this is a question that we have over here. Um, we've got some of the, uh, the kind of, sort of the, the terminology that we use in A-level physics quite a lot. So a smooth surface means there's no friction. We've got, um, for whatever reason, this uh, quarter circle sheet joined onto a smooth horizontal plane. And then we've got this uh, light rigid rod with two small equal masses. So I've actually kind of made this uh, to kind of show what we're talking about. And because we've got this light rod, we assume that that has no mass. And that means all of the mass is at each end. So this is the kind of thing that's going to slide along uh, that part of a circle. And, uh, the, you know, the full question is here. Uh, but we want to calculate the maximum speed um, that moves as it kind of falls down. So how quickly does it go? Well, what we have here is something which is initially quite high. Over time, the tall bit, the high bit, is going to drop down, and then the gravitational potential store of energy is going to be transferred to the kinetic store. So that's the principle. So the first bit of GCSE you need to know about this is the fact that we can calculate the gravitational potential energy or the change in gravitational potential energy, and that's just using the equation that says uh, GPE or EP is going to be equal to MGH. That's the initial amount of energy that we had stored in that system. And afterwards, we've got something which is moving. And that means the kinetic energy, EK, is just going to be equal to a half times M times V squared. So at the moment, two bits of simple GCSE physics. Now, of course, what makes this more tricky than the simple GCSE exam style question is you need to know when to apply the different equations. Now, initially, one of the masses is on the table and the other one is up in the air. And that means the gravitational potential energy of this whole system is due to this mass up here. So EP equals MGH is going to be the starting energy. After this slides down and it moves along a little bit just like that, we now have two masses which are moving. And that's because of the energy stored initially just in one mass. So as the whole thing is moving, we're going to have a half times the total mass, which is going to be 2M times v squared. So that's before and that's after. We can obviously equate the two things together to say that mgh is equal to a half times two, which is just one m v squared. And now we can see that the m's cancel on both sides. So gh is equal to v squared, or v is just equal to the square root of gh. Now, of course, we know the gravitational field strength, it's 9.81. What about the value of h? Well, that's where I think most students, the 70% you couldn't answer this question, that's where they made a mistake because they couldn't work out how high this was. And that's because looking in the question, there wasn't much information there. But the two things I thought were important was the radius of the circle and also that the separation of the masses is equal to an eighth of the circumference of a circle. Now, I've got a diagram here. But one of the kind of key things you need to know about in physics is if you're ever unsure, just draw a big diagram so you can label everything. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just going to do this freehand. I'm going to be a bit of a maverick. Uh, we've basically got this and this. Okay, and these are parts of that circle where this length here is 3.4 metres and that's 3.4 metres. And of course, if we know this is an eighth of a circle, that's going to be an eighth of 360 degrees. So it's just going to be equal to 45 degrees as the angle in there. Okay, so that's basically what we've got in this part of the diagram. But we want to know how much higher this point is than this point down here. And that means we want to know effectively this height here, which is h. Now again, this is my diagram, so I can understand things. Uh, and what I'm just going to start to do is just logically work through things step by step, again, using all of the knowledge that anybody will learn at GCSE. So what we have is a triangle. We want to know this distance here. So my approach to that is basically I'm going to draw another line across there. 
And if we know the side of this length, we know that there's a 90 degree angle here. We could then work out the side of this length from this point in the corner down to this point down here. And if we know that distance, we can take it away from 3.4 to get the height down here. Again, this is where we're going to be using some uh, GCSE math stuff looking at Sokotoa. We've got um, this angle, which I'm just going to label as theta. We've got the hypotenuse, and we want to know the adjacent side. So again, labeling on the diagram saves lots of hassle later on. Uh, we know theta h, we want to know a, so we can use cos. Where this adjacent side is equal to h cos theta, we can put some numbers in. Of course, always making sure that your calculator is set to degrees rather than radians for this. Uh, and we find that this is equal to 2.404 of a metre. Okay, so that means the height is going to be equal to 3.4, the radius, take away this value, which is 0 0.9958. And just to make sure that I'm not rounding down too early, I'm going to keep this number in the calculator. Uh, I'm going to multiply that by 9.81, and then we're going to square root that and we find that the answer is equal to 3.125, or actually 3.1255656. But of course, we were only given the radius to two significant figures, so really we can say that that final velocity is 3.1 metres per second. Now, in that whole question, we only needed to know two equations, which are often given to people at GCSE, for kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy. All of you know that. We also had some uh, stuff here using a bit of Sokotoa and actually looking at the dimensions of a triangle and what happens with a circle. That's all GCSE mathematics. But sometimes when you first see a question like this, it appears really difficult. And if this 70% of the people who couldn't get the question had just drawn a diagram, worked through things step by step, they'd have probably been much more likely to have achieved the right answer. So let me know how you did in the comments. Could you have done this question without this help? If so, then obviously you're the right kind of people to be doing A-level physics or maybe thinking about it in the future. And of course, if you like this question and you want to have more practice, especially if you're doing A-level physics, I've got a whole series of workbooks with questions for every single day of the course. You can find these over at alevelphysicsonline.com.